All right, so I actually started this live a little bit early because I wanted to get set up for it. And that's what I'm doing right now. Is I'm just setting up for the live. So anyone that comes on, you probably could skip ahead a little bit. We got about 15 minutes before the actual live really starts. So uh, bear with me, and that's what we're doing. I'm just kind of setting things up. I'm using my crappier camera right here. I don't know why it's flickering like that. It shouldn't be doing that, but hopefully it'll stop that. Let me see. Might be a bad connection. Let's see what I'm connected to here. Let's see if that helps a little bit. And I want to get over here. Pull my phone up. Volume down. I'm a bit concerned about the amount of lag I'm getting now, that's for sure. Um, Hello, Ken. Hello, Kaylin. I'm a bit early. I'm just checking for the lag and whatever. I see it is getting some lag. Showing five people here. I'm not sure who else is here yet. Hey, Trinity. How are you doing? I'm, so, I'm not sure if it's lagging on you guys and or not. But um, using this camera first, but I'm going to switch over to the other camera as soon as we get more people here. I was giving people a little bit of time because it's not 1030 yet. It's good. Well, I was looking on my phone, and my phone wasn't showing that it was all that great. But um, let me check the settings and make sure we're up as high as it will go. We're at 720p now. I think we're going to switch it to 480 and see if that's a little better. So it gives a little bit less lag, hopefully. Well, we're showing six people. We got uh, one, two, three, four with me. There's someone named, I think, Janice that's coming from Facebook. Are you here, Janice? She's uh, an artist. And I think she's a beginning. I'm not sure if she's a beginner or intermediate or, or what. Doesn't really matter. We're all here to learn something. I guess we don't need my volume on over here. So this is what I'll be doing. I'm going to be switching in the middle here. I'm just testing that now. I can switch the camera to this one. And then we'll go to the painting, of which I can zoom in on that one. And I'm sure everybody can see that. Hopefully. There we go. So when people come in, that's what I'll do. I'll switch over to that one. I'm still using the microphone from this camera here at the moment, but I will be switching over to my good mic over there. 
So we'll switch back over to this camera here. Pretty quick. I wish I had the control over here to do that, but I, I don't think I'm pretty sure I don't. I can't wait. <laughs> I didn't even shave. I wasn't even expecting to be on camera myself. I thought it was only a good idea if I at least came on um, and people could see me. I should have shaved first, I guess. But everybody who knows me knows I'm not much for shaving. This camera is flickering. I don't know why. This is supposed to be a really good camera, too, and I'm getting a flicker out of it. I have no idea why. Could be the heater down here. They've got a heater in here. It's actually was really cold. I wasn't being smart. I didn't come out here earlier and turn the heat on, which I should have done. So we we see six people here. Oh, I'm here too. That's right too. I'm here on that one over there. It just doesn't, it's not saying anything because I haven't typed anything. So it's one, two, three, four. I'm, I'm in here twice. There was someone out here, but they left. I'm not sure who it was, but they left. Maybe Wesley will make it on for Santa. Um, Mackenzie's at the hospital. Um, she told me earlier. I think her boyfriend's in there because he's from his diabetes. But she wanted to be here too, so I told her she can still watch it. She just wants to be able to watch it. You can watch it later after it posts when it's done. And I think he might have something wrong with his um, appendix or something else. I guess he got type 1 diabetes. Probably be able to see better if I clean my glasses. And when this painting is done, for everybody watching it, it'll be for sale. <laughs> Although I may put it in the gallery. I talked to the gallery. And they uh, want me to put some more paintings over there, which I haven't done yet. They had a gallery, a gallery um, show. I think it was... Um, the uh, 12th, 12th to the 13th. I was going to go and I forgot. But then again, I didn't have anything there anyway. We'll see, Trinity. It might sell in the gallery if I ever get around to getting it put in there. You might not like it. <laughs> Can you all see that flickering, or am I just seeing it on my end? Jamie. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Good to see you. We've got a few people here. We're actually a little bit early, um, mostly because waiting for people to come in. Jamie's from Facebook. Jamie, are you a beginner or intermediate or which or you just want to learn how to paint? Just so you know, we'll be switching cameras over here in a minute. You won't be able to see me. Uh, Recon did text me and say he's going to be here. I'm not sure when. I think he's picking up one of his kids or something. Actually, Jamie, that's why I kind of have the, the lives later because a lot of people have kids. And by the time they get them to bed and everything and settle down, it gives them a little bit of time to relax before they uh, jump on live.
Well, I was an oil painter for most of my life, and I recently started painting in acrylic. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to because, as you know, in oil, you're used to having the, the freedom of the oil not drying very quickly. So you kind of have to get used to the fact that you got to make sure you got water, you know, spray your paint pretty often. Use a wet palette if you can. Um, I don't use a wet palette normally. I just spray it as I go. But then again, right now I'm doing a fairly small painting right now. So it's not that big of a deal. I've been thinking about doing a wet palette and just uh, get it set up. No, I'm not doing a wet on wet. No, Ken. I'm doing an acrylic painting. And acrylic dries pretty fast. That's the biggest problem with acrylic is it dries so quickly. Now, I do use extender. Um, I've done some short videos on this, but uh, I use the Golden Retarder. They call it Retarder, but it's, it's an extender. And if you just put a drop or two of this in your paint, it'll keep it wet for a lot longer and it'll give you a lot more opportunity for blending. So, and this does work really well. I think it's about, I think when I bought this, it's probably about eight or nine dollars a bottle, and it lasts quite a long time. But if you know you want something, you want it to be wet as long as possible without adding water to it all the time, that extender does help a lot. But you don't need a lot, you know, just if you get just a small amount of paint, you know, only a drop or two is all you need and it'll keep it wet enough for you to uh, blend with. I still spray a little bit of water in there, on there too some, but. It does help a lot. So we're getting close to the time. Now this little painting here is going to be a 12 by 12 canvas. Yeah. And um, I actually did not prime it. I normally do prime with gesso, but a landscape I'm not quite so picky with, but um, it's already pre-primed. Honestly, if it was a portrait, you can bet I'd have primed it. I primed it probably two or three times because I want it to be a lot smoother. So I'm going to switch over to the camera. i got to make a couple of adjustments here. And we'll go ahead and we'll get started. And if some people come in, great. <laughs> okay, I can read your comments, by the way. Not a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm calling it kind of a, a moonlight morning. And if you think about it, when you get outside in the morning and the sun's just coming up and it's like really bright, shining through the trees and stuff. I kind of got the idea actually from actually someone else that's on YouTube. I saw it a while back from uh, Joni Art. And I'm going to do something similar to his. won't be exactly like his, but I liked it. And I thought it would be a great lesson for people to learn. And we're only going to be using uh, Sicilian blue. Let me see if I can get that in front of the camera. Um, red, lemon yellow. Now, supposed to use black, but I like to use Payne's Gray. I'm not sure anybody's familiar with that, but Payne's Gray is a little bit lighter. It's not quite so dark. And, of course, titanium white. So I'm going to lay them out on the palette real quick. If I can open them.
and we'll do a Cecilia, uh, Cerulean Blue. And a Lemon Yellow. There's a lot of Lemon Yellow. And um, red, probably any red would work, bright red, whatever. And then, of course, Payne's Gray. That didn't work out very well. Getting more paint on me than I do on the picture. We're going to be mixing a lot of our colors, what we do need. We're going to be kind of using a brown, dark brownish color. The rest would be like a light blue. You believe that? I opened up the red and I didn't put it on the palette. Hello. Okay, now let me get this paint out of the way. I'll move it over here. So if I need it, I'll have it. I need a little more. And uh, get my reference. You get some of the paint off my fingers. It'll probably help. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, and probably some people don't know this, but with acrylic, it's a good idea to spray the back of your picture. You spray the back. It does a couple of things. For one thing, it's going to help keep your paint wetter. And it'll also tighten up your canvas. So if your canvas is loose, you can tell by the tapping it whether it tight, gets tighter or not. So it'll sound more like a drum. Actually, that's an 8 by uh, 10. I, think, I thought I had a 10 by 10, but I don't. But that's okay. This will work. Actually, I did want to do a 12 by 12. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to switch. Bear with me, folks. I should have been paying attention. I was going to do an 8 by 10 but I changed my mind. So we're totally changing. <laughs> and we're going to do a, a 12 by 12 panel. You really go behind them things, but I like to uh, have it out more so I don't have to worry about painting around everything. Okay, so first off, we're going to find a good side brush. We got a bottle of water. And we need a bigger brush. If I can find one, I should have one already here. Okay, this will work. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, dip it into some water. I do use two two glasses. Let me go ahead and zoom this in for you all. Not sure why it's not zooming. There we go. It is zooming. I just can't see it. Uh-huh. Oop, this way. There we go. Oh, it's because you got a bigger canvas. That's why. Duh. Okay. 
So here's my palette, as you can see. White, Sicilian, uh, cerulean blue, lemon yellow, red, Payne's gray. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mix. We're gonna mix a bunch of this white and some blue. Like so. It's not going to be all that dark. I'll probably need more of it. I'm going to get a little bit of water. And then we'll start. At the top. Now keep in mind with acrylic, a lot of times you have to put a couple of coats on. That's one thing I don't like about acrylic. But with oil, we don't have that problem. Of course, what does help is the less water you use, the better off you'll be. Make that a little bit darker. We're going to come about to about a third of the way down. Watch out for the little hairs. Now, I should have been using, I'm not using a synthetic brush. This one's a hair brush. Um, you can use either one, I think, on this particular painting. Probably wouldn't matter much. A little bit more. Okay, we're going to let that dry. We're going to wash the brush. And we will clean it off really well. Everybody hear me okay? Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Good to see you. So I'm going to take a little bit of this white here. It's Chris Santa, I bet. And uh, we're going to lighten this up. Pretty good. And we're going to put yellow, lemon yellow, right here in the middle. And we're going to go down a ways with that. I think I'm actually going to lighten that just a bit more. Now, you got to be careful when you get into that yellow and blue because what's going to happen is it's going to turn green. And you, it's going to be a little bit unavoidable here on the bottom. You're going to get a little bit of that greenish color. But it's not going to matter because the trees are probably going to be covering a lot of that. So I'm kind of looking at this. I'm looking at the reference, and I'm looking, and I'm thinking it probably needs to be just a little bit lighter. I'm just going to add a little bit of white in there, like so. Okay. And then we're going to go with the bottom. The bottom we're going to make a lot darker. We're going to get that pretty blue. So we're going to do that now. And I'm losing a hair on that brush. This is probably a little bit uh, thinner than I wanted it to be. That's okay. We'll add some more to it. This brush is falling apart. I need another brush. That's unusual for my brushes. I don't, I don't use any expensive ones at all. 
Evidently, that one is inexpensive. There we go. That's better. That's better. Quality brushes makes a big difference. You just pretty much slap it on however you want to and just end it with horizontal strokes. I probably could have used a bigger brush for this, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Is anyone having any problems seeing everything? It's a bit blurry. Yeah, I, I expected that it would be, and I apologize, and that's because of the internet here. It's so crappy. And I upgraded the internet package, so I was getting a lot more uh, bandwidth going down and up. Uh, actually, the up's about the same, but it's it did give me a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to let that dry a little bit more because I'm probably going to have to add some more to that. Make sure them horizontal strokes go all the way across, though. So now we want to get a bit of a, a rougher brush. Probably a bigger, I should have got the bigger one to begin with. And I didn't. So I'm going to put the palette back here. And find another brush. So what we're going to do is, um, I'm probably going to need some more blue here by the looks. We're going to need a darker color. So we'll pull some of this blue over here and we'll pull it down here. Some of this red. Which is kind of going to make a purple, but we need to, we'll put some yellow in there too. And it's going to make it this darker brown, basically. And all we want to do here is we want to just put in some leaves from the trees like so and we're going to be going all the way across down here too we're going to need a lot more paint for sure Get some more of this yellow it looks like a mess but that's what we're going to do here. And uh, we'll come all the way up into the top here. But a bit sparingly. You don't want it to be too, too blobby, you know. Put some in here. Some right here. And uh, maybe some up here in the corner. Because this is where your trees are going to be, really. And we're going to be coming in, in here. 
Get that out of there. And we'll get some more blue and mix in here. More red. Get that pretty dark. We're going to add a little bit of darkness. Paints gray to that. I want to make this a little bit darker. So we're going to put a little bit more up in here. And darken it up a little bit more. Want some of them dark areas. You always want dark areas in with your trees. And I know that looks probably pretty rough about right now, but and we're going to try and go along the bottom here. Pretty dark right in here. All the way across the bottom. And uh, put a few areas here with some more bushes. Okay. That looks pretty good. We'll wash this brush. And we'll put that into a, a clean water one. A little bit cleaner. Whoops, I don't have my trash can. It may be acrylic, but like oil, I still use the beater in my trash can now. And um, I think now we're going to just kind of get some more of this blue. And we're going to bring it across here. This is pretty wet still. But we're going to, I need to let it dry some more probably. But uh, let's see if I can get some more blue in here. My brush probably should have been a little bit drier. Probably would have helped a lot. But I'm going to go ahead and put that on. I think what I'm going to do is get another brush. And this really needs to be dry. So we're going to go ahead and use this other brush some more. But I'm going to get a little bit drier. It's still too wet. We should have had more napkins here. Okay, so for this foliage in here, we want it, we're going to use just plain old cerulean blue. And what we're going to do is we're just going to try to tap some of that blue in here. And probably need even more than that. It needs to be pretty thick. I know it looks probably really strange about now. Probably looks pretty rough. But we want some of the dark areas to show anyway, so that's that's what's important. I'm using a lot of Cecil, uh, cerulean blue for sure. And we're kind of waiting for this to dry a bit more here. I'd like to get some more blue in there, but what I really want to do though is uh, right in here, see, we're still wet, and uh, I need to get that to dry up some more.
Because what we're going to do is what we have to do here is we're going to add some yellow, but we we don't want to put the yellow on now because it's wet. And like I said, if we add that yellow now, it's going to turn green. We don't want it to turn green. I don't mind getting some a little bit darker areas in there with a little bit darker blue. So while we're waiting for that, let me get some more paper towel here real quick. And of course, you know, we'll be doing this for a little while. So we'll need some more paper towel. Ah, oh, Recon made it. How you doing, Recon? Glad you made it. You get all your errands run? Does anybody have any questions right now about anything? And for people that are new, we do have a membership you can join if you'd like to. It's not very much. It's helps the, with the channel a little bit. If anybody has any uh, inclination to do that, we've got five or six members right now, I believe. You can join right on uh, my, my channel right there is a membership. Click on membership. It just helps buy paint and stuff like that. So what you want to do is I'm still waiting for this to dry and this is still pretty wet Which is a bit frustrating because it's cold in here. So it's making it take a lot longer Than I want it to If I had a hairdryer, I'd actually probably put a hairdryer on it and let it dry out some I'm actually just kind of uh, trying to fill in some of these little white holes in the canvas. I don't really want to put any more paint on there, waiting for it to dry. There was oil out of painted a little bit different. Wouldn't have had all that there. I'm going to attempt in a minute here to put that yellow in, but I'm really afraid it's going to turn green. What am I painting? I'm painting, I think I said before you, when you got here, I was telling you it was the morning sunlight coming through the trees you'll see how it works out here um, as we go along here get this brush dry oops Okay, I want to get my painter's knife here. I'm going to move some of my yellow paint here because it's a little bit contaminated. And it's strange. It's, it's cooler in here. And um, I never did much painting when it was cold as far as acrylic went. 
usually got to water it down before now. So, I really need this to be drier. Acrylic normally, if you're using acrylic paints, it normally dries really fast within minutes. And I'm sure uh, Jamie's already found that out that uh, it dries pretty quick. Um, well, it depends on whether it's framed or not framed. Framed is probably be around one hundred twenty-five to one hundred and fifty dollars. Well, we I think we're just about there, Ken. I just wanted to dry this brush a lot more. I didn't want him watering that paint at all. I got a little bit of a something white there, but I think I'll cover that up with the yellow. But it looks like it's a it's pretty dry now. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna try to uh, put some of this yellow in here. But I need a little bit of white to go with it. So what we want to do here is we want to, we don't want it to be on there too heavy. We want to just start very, very lightly right in here like this. We're going to start right in here. And we're going to just paint this yellow just like so. Right down to the bottom. We want it to come out to the sides, you know, as much as you can, but you want that blue to be showing. Because you'll see why in a minute, because we're going to be going over that with some blue. Again. Okay, so that's probably going to be enough. I'd like to bet I'd like to have had that a little bit smoother, but I think we'll be okay with that. I'm going to wash that brush. I'm really paying special attention to these brushes right now because I don't want them getting wet. Too wet. And uh, I just want to bring that out a little bit more by going over it to kind of level it out a little bit. That's all I'm doing, leveling it out a little bit. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and make us some more dark color. I'm actually going to use a knife this time because I want quite a bit of it. Predominantly blue. Most of it's going to be blue as far as in back trees go anyway, but they're going to be more blue than anything. Okay, so... We'll get us a small brush. Wet it just a little bit. Get us some paint. And we're going to start making the trees. And we'll start by just wherever you want to make a tree. And we're going to start, we're going to be coming down to about right there. So we'll start with right here. Now, if that doesn't slide good enough, 
then that means you're probably going to need some more water in it. And it's definitely not doing it for me. And uh, could have been a little bit bluer for that matter. They don't need to be perfectly straight. And in fact, I think I'm going to add some more blue to it. Now you can use a uh, a flat brush if you prefer. Now I'm just coming to about right here, but we're going to be coming down in other areas too. We don't want to have it just coming down in that one spot either. I think I'm going to make that just a little bit darker. Now, they don't all need to be real thick. They can be really thin ones, like so. And you don't want them to be all real thick anyway. Some thin ones here and there, wider ones, whatever. That one's going to be a bit wider, whether I want it to be or not. And you have to go back and forth and get that paint pretty often. Now, as you can see, I must start bringing some of these down a little bit more. That one there needs to dry some more. But I want to be, some of them are back, some of them are ahead more. We're kind of going to start stepping them along a little bit because some of them are behind the other ones. We want some in front, some of them behind. And some even this way more even. Maybe about right there. And I'm trying to rush too much myself. 
Normally I take a lot longer. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> This being my first live video, I guess I'm a bit more nervous, I guess. I kind of hope the old mini might drop in here tonight and see us, but I guess not. So can you start to see how the you're getting some dimension in them trees now? Some little skinny ones here and there. They don't all have to be the same length. You're different lengths. Things like that. Kind of look in there for your any gaps or whatever. Put some even close together. It doesn't matter. Just don't forget to try to keep them varying as far as the, the length of these trunks. That does make a difference. I need to get some more here, I think. It's coming down a little bit more. I'll keep them coming. Way down. That's good. And maybe we'll get uh, one more here.
Okay. So that's pretty good right there. We'll wash that brush. Now I use rosemary brushes. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with those, but they're over in England. I get them from they're from England themselves. It costs a bit for shipping, but they're excellent brushes. Love them. So next we're going to use a little bit bigger brush if I can find one. That one's taking too long. Maybe we'll use this one here. And um, I'm actually going to use some of this lighter blue. Now, as you can tell, you probably can't see it from where you are, but I can tell that I need to spray some water. We're already getting a little bit dry. Spray it on your paint. Now, what we're going to do is here is we're going to start coming down. We're going to look for the middle. Well, the middle is, you know, about right there. Um, and we're going to just, we'll start right here. And we're going to come right on down. Straight. And what I'm doing is is the shadow. That's what we're doing. We're doing the shadows from the trees. You know, it doesn't really matter which ones you're doing. Just grab the tree and try to keep your hands steady. Then you have to hit it again. You're actually going to be going outwards eventually. That's a bit too big, but hopefully it won't be too noticeable. It does help if you use a stick. I'm not sure where my stick is. If I can find one, if you use a stick. You can do this a whole lot easier. We'll hit that again when it dries some more. I mean, they don't have to be perfectly straight. Don't think that they do, because they don't. Just, you know, relatively straight. Your trees aren't all that straight either, so you definitely don't want them to have to be straight. I might even have too much of an angle. I don't know. All we want is to indicate some shadows. That's all we want to do. And don't forget your other little trees, you know. Like to be a little bit more. Uh -huh. I 
Then we'll go to the other side and do the same thing. But we'll be coming out the other angle. About like so. So this is looking pretty well, I think, and we're coming, making sure we get them lines all the way down there as much as we can. They don't have to call away, be all the way to the end, but somewhere close. Pay attention to the bottom of the trunks here and cut them off with this blue color. About like so. I'm not too sure this uh, is even dry yet up here. I'm just totally amazed. Normally, I'm always fighting it being too dry, for sure. Now's the time to touch up any spots you see that are, need to be touched up on the bottom here or wherever. I see some several places there. That need to be darkened up a little bit more. If you see any lines that you really need to fix, now's the time to do it. Like this one here, I had to wait for it to dry so I could fix it. This one here, I know I kind of like to have it more straighter, a little bit wider here at the bottom. Give a little bit of a dimension right about there like that. And you don't have to be all, all that fussy, really. Now, we could actually bring a couple more bigger ones down if we really wanted to. And, you know, that's up to you. I actually would have brought some, made some a little bit thicker. But what we're going to do now is clean that brush. And we're going to take this brush again. We're going to grab some more yellow. We don't want to, we got a tiny bit of red in that. Because we want it to be a little bit. No, we don't. We want it to be more yellow. So we'll take some of the lemon yellow very carefully. And hopefully that's not too wet. And what we're going to do now is blow everybody's mind. We're going to just start coming across here with that yellow. Again, right in there like that.
just like that and it's just in the middle mostly in the middle want that to dry a little bit first and then I'm gonna clean the brush again we need to dry it okay so now we're gonna take and get some more blue What we need to do is we need to highlight these trees that we've already got done here. And what we need to do here is we put some of these blue leaves up here. About like so. Just very lightly here and there. Maybe some up in here. A little bit down there. And some of that we want to be a little bit thicker there like that. And to come down a little bit more here. I'm going to leave that open somewhat. Okay, then, we, then you get that done. Then we'll add some white into that blue. And get a lot whiter. But still blue. We still want it to be blue. All we want to do is make some highlights with this blue here. A little bit lighter color. A little bit lighter there. Just a little bit here and there. You don't need a whole lot, just a little bit here and there. And that's basically all you really need right there. You can wash your brush again. Kind of waiting for that to dry some because this is where it's important uh, that it be dry because we're going to be putting white in there and we've got to have it to be dry so while it's drying let me read some of this here Are you paying on a boat, Jamie? <laughs> it's a bit rocky out there, I'm sure. Well, at night is pretty calm, probably, I would think. I'm an old Navy veteran, so it's pretty calm at night on the ocean for me, anyway. So I am basically waiting for this to dry. I need this to dry a little bit more. I'm going to get rid of some of this trash right here while it's drying. Okay, so I knocked it out of the sink here. Probably did. Okay. I guess you can see it. Now, probably I should have made this a little bit more orangey down here in the bottom. So if you'd add a little bit of red to the yellow, it would have made it orangey. And it probably would have been a little bit better effect uh, to do that. I wish I had now, but it's a little bit too late for that now. So what we're going to do is, hopefully this is dry enough. I'm going to use this little oval brush with some white pure white 
Okay, and I'm going to take and put the sun right here in the middle. About like this. Probably going to need a couple of coats. In between coats. We'll hit it again. Because we want this to be nice and bright. So bright that it's blinding. And you'll see how we'll do that here in just a minute. Okay, so I've got the paint on here right now. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take a flat, dry brush. And I'm probably going to put a little bit of paint on that, too. Not a lot, but a little bit. And we're going to go across about like this. Level. Basically level. About like that. And then we're going to come up here. Maybe about like so. Like that. Very carefully. And we'll come this way too. And we're probably going to take and put a little bit more white in here now. So I definitely want that to be nice and bright. And then what we want to do is take this brush and we're going to brush it out. Back and forth. Just like that. Kind of a, a hypnotizing effect like. And as you can see, you're probably going to have to add more white again. And I figured we would. Let's get some more white. Add some more to it right in the middle. You may have to add that a number of times to make that as bright as it needs to be. So we'll try this again very lightly. And I'm going out, making strokes going out. Like so. And it still needs to have some more white. It's not looking as good as I was hoping it would. But this is where you would actually just keep plugging along until you get what you want. But the idea is to make that look white and bright. Now, if you, uh, if you get a little bit more white there than you want, you can always thin, put a little bit of water on your brush and kind of uh, thin it out a little bit, work it out. Fill them gaps in or, or erase them. You can... Use water like an eraser with acrylics.
just like that. I really wanted a little bit of that white in there, so I did that on purpose. It's a little bit more than I wanted, so I'll wipe it off a little bit. Take a paper towel, and you got your eraser. We just don't want, and I still wanted some more. White in the middle. The more white you put in the middle, the brighter it's going to be. I'm putting it on pretty thick in the middle there. But there you go. And we'll call that a finished painting. Now we got to do all this brush cleaning. And no... Um, Bob Ross, that's not the fun part. <laughs> Excuse me. I used to love how Bob Ross wanted to fool everybody and make them think that uh, cleaning the brushes was fun. Wrong. Okay, so we got everything pretty much cleaned up here. I'm going to just uh, sign it. Somewhere here. I can never sign my name small. Never could. I don't know why. I just never could. My writing ain't very good anyway. Alrighty. There we go. Now, let's see if I can get out of this mess right here. I'm going to put the camera... Hopefully, where you can see it a little better. Kind of uh, crooked there, I guess. But there it is. What number that painting? I don't count my paintings. I have no idea. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch cameras and jump over the other side over here. I'm going to log myself off over here. I don't need to be here anymore. Good. X, get off there. And I will throw this paper away that I don't need.
There we go. Let's see if I can change the audio. Okay, now we go. Uh, switch the cameras back. I don't particularly like it all that much, to tell you the truth. I uh, I wasn't real happy with it. <laughs> but I think I was just trying to hurry along too much, most likely. But it's my first live, so, you know, you got to forgive me for that. I just, I tried. I was really concerned about the internet and having enough bandwidth and all that stuff. And so it kind of interfered. My thought process was there all the time. I've done polls like that, Ken. Nobody ever answers them. <laughs> But I'll probably do I'll probably do one anyway. I really wanted to do like a portrait, but I knew that was going to be an awful lot of work, and it was going to take quite a while to do that. Well, I think it was actually right at an hour, pretty close to it, right at it. But I actually started the channel a little bit early. Um, Ken and I were here, and Trendy came in. Is Trandy still here? Or did she leave? Uh, thank you, Jamie. Yeah, you can. You can do it. Can you just? I keep telling you, it's all in your head. If you want to paint, you can paint. I'm one of them people that I don't believe that it takes talent to paint. It doesn't hurt, but it doesn't take talent to paint. You can paint if you really want to. It's just a matter of mind over matter. If you want to do it, you can do it. Did Caitlin leave? I'm trying to read back here a little bit to see what's who's here and who isn't here. Oh, you run a restaurant down there, huh, Jamie? Are you in Florida, Jamie? It doesn't take skill. Trust me, it doesn't. That's good. Yeah, uh, painting signs, is a, there's nothing wrong with that. I've had people ask me about painting some signs, but... I just really just didn't want to at the time. Oh, you're in the Virgin Islands. Wow. Right now, an elephant might paint better than you can, but we can get you to paint. Believe me. This is my first live painting, but it's not my first teaching painting. I did that for years. I taught painting in person for years. And I already told you once before, I used to teach people from a nursing home that never picked up a brush in their life, never even seen a tube of paint that was 75, 80 years old and more. And they painted really well. All they had to have is the right instructions. And that's what makes the big difference. Um, 
Jamie, did you do you paint traditional painting or do you paint right on wet like Bob Ross and Bill Alexander or both or which kind of painting do you do? Um, no, it wasn't the Virgin Islands. It was another island over out there, there. It wasn't the Virgin Island, no. Well, that's good. Well, Dolph, y'all know I smoke. Um, there's nothing wrong with that at all, Jamie, starting with Bob Ross. I started with Bob Ross. Actually, I started with Bill Alexander which was before Bob Ross, and then Bob Ross. Yes, I'm still a DoorDasher, Ken, uh, Recon, and I'm doing Uber also. I, I uh, put myself into a rut doing Bob Ross and Bill Alexander when I went. I did it for so many years, and you can only paint so many mountains and so many clouds and things like that that way before you kind of get burned out doing it. I'm talking about a hundred paintings. So I did want to paint traditional paintings, but I wasn't sure really how to start. So I had to force myself to do that. And the only person I knew, this is before the internet, the only person I knew that painted was an abstract artist. And he was really good at it too. He made good money painting. I mean, he had a, a gallery buy one of his paintings for $3,500. I wouldn't have gave you a nickel for it, but that's because I'm a more of a realistic painter. <clears throat> so I had to teach myself how to do traditional paintings. I did pick up some books here and there and finally when some more traditional painters got on TV, I was definitely paying attention and reading books and then experimenting myself. I'd have gave anything to have had the internet back when I was learning how to paint. But I do I do believe truly, Jamie, that even if you start out with Bob Ross and Bill Alexander, when I'm wet, it is a good way to start. And the only reason I say it's a good way to start is you get familiar with paint, the colors, uh, mixing paint, you get used to the brushes. You get used to making sure your canvas is primed. Um, wet on wet, totally wet on wet anyway. Um, cleaning your brushes. It gets you into some pretty good habits that way. So it is a good stepping stone. I think that's what it should be used for, a stepping stone. Uh, then you can move on to traditional painting. Well, let me give you a little tip about that. I get in painters' blocks all the time because I've painted so many paintings that it seems like I've already done that painting. <laughs> That's the way I feel a lot. I'm sure you've seen some of the ones on my channel. Uh, in here, you can see lots of them. More traditional paintings. Um, portraits. Portraits is kind of fairly new for me. But they're not as bad as you think they are. They're, you just have to take your time. And it just helps a lot to have somebody help you and show you how to do things instead of learning everything the hard way, which is by yourself. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up a painting. Let me see if I can find it here. What I'm, I'm going to show you, it's, it's embarrassing for me because this is one of my first, my very first portraits. And I believe I did it in oil. 
But I'm going to show you the difference. Once you get a little bit of help, uh, what it can do for you. Okay, so let me find the first one of the first portraits I've done. Okay, here's a good example right here. Now, this is not a good picture for sure. Uh, let me see if I can remember how to pull them in. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. This is one of my first paintings. Now, it's not very well, not very well done. Yes, I painted over paintings before. When I was desperate for canvas, I painted over paintings. <laughs> well, I know. This is actually. My grand, three granddaughters. This is Kylie, Michaela, and Kirsten. Now look at Kirsten. She was pretty young there. Now let me see if I can um, scroll back. There's this is Ariana and Cadence. Not very, not very well done. Those are oil. This is when I was learning how to do portraits. I had no help. I was just struggling horribly to learn how to paint portraits. There's a couple of my nephews. So as you can see, I'm getting a little bit better here. This, this one's on uh, McKinsey. But I'm still not there. Then this is Dylan. This is Jennifer's son, Dylan. That's Caitlin, who was here earlier. You can see I'm missing a lot, a lot. I'm missing the, I'm missing the tones are not right. The shadows are not right. The background is horrible. Um, the hair is not done that well. I tried real hard, but, you know, this is before I really, really got into doing portraits. This is my son, another one of my... His girlfriend he had. Learning experience. That's what these are. Learning experiences. I saved them to show people that I want to do pictures like this. That's my wife. Um, that was done in oil too. That was probably over 20 years ago. That's Kirsten. That was done after the one I showed with the three girls. There's Michaela, one of the girls. The camera didn't help that one at all. There's Kylie. That's the old Marlboro man. Let me get past those. So there were some really, really bad pictures. Okay, there's, now, now I'm coming into acrylic. This one is my granddaughter, Kylie. As you can see, the tones are getting to be a lot better. Thank you about that, the Marlboro Man, yeah. <laughs> 
the tones are a lot better now and we're in acrylic and I used glazing. I figured out how to do glazing. That is um, Kirsten. That was done a number of years ago too, but that was also an acrylic. This was my brother-in-law. And believe it or not, that's exactly what he looked like. And that's done in acrylic. He passed away not too long ago, and my wife wanted a picture, so I painted it. The picture was really old and very poor quality. Now, this is um, what I did of Michaela. Now, you can see I'm really, I really started to learn the skin tones. The skin tones are coming in. The shadows are in there. The colors are a lot better. The hair is a lot better. Well, you know, just really concentrate on yourself, Jamie. You're going to go at your own pace. But the more help you get, the better it'll be. Because learning them little tricks, learning the little tips and tricks makes a big difference. That's my one of my grandsons I painted. That's also an acrylic. That's my son and his fiance, acrylic. That's what I did of myself. <laughs> this was a commission I did actually, and actually it came out pretty well because that's what the picture looked like. That was back in the 1700s. This was one of them um, guys that founded Connecticut. I did it for a history teacher. No, I did say how Jennifer is doing. She's doing okay. I'm surprised she didn't come on tonight. Now, this painting was done in acrylic right here, this house. But I'd already been doing oil for many, many, many years. Um, so I had a pretty good idea what I was doing, even, if, even though it was acrylic. There's my wife. This is the second one. The other one I did was the, the first version. This is the second version I did ever. And this one was done also in oil, though. This one was done in oil. This is traditional painting. Okay, this is one of my paintings from England. Um, I got a lot of, I got a whole collection of the England, England art that I did. Because I studied under Michael James Smith, and you've probably seen him on YouTube. Uh, Michael James Smith taught me how to paint traditional painting, probably more than anybody else. There's another traditional painting from England. Um, that's an acrylic painting also right there. Yeah, the water. Uh -huh. Back on this other one. I guess I lost it. Yeah, going the wrong way now. Whoops. Now that picture right there is of my granddaughter um cadence this painting right here i have a tutorial for i did it right here it's in my uh videos right here if you look in my playlist you'll be able to find it the first england yes that was water i got some more of the england ones coming up here somewhere
I also trained under the uh, world famous Leonard Abmoff. which was knife painting. Can't find some of them. No, I haven't heard from many. I did hear from Brad once. Now this is uh this is what I did when I was studying under Michael James Smith. This is an apple painting I did. At least one of my best paintings, actually. And the whole idea of the apple painting is when I learned from Michael James Smith, what I would learn, I learned to do was to block in all the colors with acrylic. And when you block in with acrylic, then you paint over it with oil. This is actually an oil painting. And yeah, that makes a big, big difference. So you can make it look very real. Now this is a knife painting. And I also will be doing some knife paintings here eventually. Um, because I started under the, actually the world famous Leonard Abmoff. You probably may have heard of him. Um, I started under him for a year. And I'm actually a certified instructor for Leonard Abmoff for his paintings. This one here sold at the gallery here locally. I think it was like $400. Yeah, I I kind of I like it okay. It's just that uh, what you probably if you've done it like this, you then you know already that it takes an enormous amount of paint. That's the only thing I don't like about it is the amount of paint with a knife. Yes, only knife, no no brushes, nothing. Here's another one I did with a knife. Knife only, no brushes. Basically, a knife just like this one. Just like that. Actually, it's not that hard. It's, uh, it's a bit more time consuming and it uses a lot of uh, paint. I was really surprised that it really wasn't that difficult. I think the fear of the painting with a knife probably is the hardest part there is. Thank you. This is another England painting right here. Probably the hardest thing for me was using doing the background leaves uh, because I wanted them to be brighter, but they wasn't supposed to be because when you look in the distance, everything is always going to be a lighter color and a little bit more blurry. And that's how you get your perspective right. As you come closer, you have to have more detail. 
and that makes a big, big difference in your painter. Well, even Bob Ross's paintings, when you do mountains that are far back, they should be blurrier in a lot lighter color. The closer the, the closer the mountains come to you, the more contrast you're going to have. The clearer they're going to be and the more color definition. Um, the last thing I did was, and I was going to show Jamie here, because if she wants to do portraits, this is where I am right now with portraits. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. This is my great granddaughter. And I get all that uh, reflection in the way. Probably can't see it. There's a horse I did. That was done in oils. I did that one years and years ago. I did that one probably over 20 years ago. This is probably one of the hardest ones I did right here. This one was huge, 24 by 36. I did it as a commission for somebody, but they never paid me. They skipped out on the money. And that was done in oil. Before I really learned how to paint portraits. Now this was done in acrylic. This is a good example of a fantasy painting. Um, I actually, that's like my granddaughter Kirsten. And uh, it's just a fantasy painting. <clears throat> it was a big one. It was like 40 by 42 or something like that. Good night, Ken. Have a good one. But uh, that one I sold on the internet here for like $600. But it was a big painting. Yeah, I love that's one of my favorite ones too. And uh, luckily, I have I have prints of it and stuff like that. I do sell prints too. This is Stevie Ray Vaughan. This was done with a knife only also. That's Stevie Ray Vaughan. That was a pretty good size picture there. Yeah, take it easy, Ken. He's already gone. Fire. Um, not that I can recall. Probably have, but I don't remember. Fire is, you know, basically, you know, reds, uh, reds, orange, yellow, white. The hotter it is, the whiter it is. You're lagging in chat, Recon? Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'm on satellite, so it makes it really hard to, to uh, deal with. I'll be glad when I get that new Starlink whenever it's available and I can afford it. It's really super, super expensive. But you can use it in an RV, a boat, or whatever, and you get like unbelievable download and upload speeds. It's amazing.
Jamie, are you subscribed to the channel? Because if you subscribe to the channel, make sure you click the bell and click the all. So when I do the lives, okay, great. That way you'll get the notices automatically um, whenever I do a live or when I put up a new painting or whatever. Well, he said good night. I thought he was leaving. So, and I think he did. I'm not sure. I think he did leave. Okay, great, Jamie. Great. And if you do, uh, the, the memberships are nice. You get different benefits for the memberships. You get to see videos before other people do. You get other a lot of other perks to it. But I'm behind. I want to get actually, uh, I have the, uh, clothing and all that stuff and i want to get my own cup i thought one of my grandkids would get the hint and get me one of my own mugs for uh kim cast art but they didn't do it so i guess i'll have to do it myself Yeah, everyone's really friendly here, you know, it's for sure. I, I do want to get some more art people involved, people that are artists and whatnot. And in fact, Jamie, um, let me, um, I need to get up online here so I can, uh, I'm going to make you a moderator for the channel. Well, that's the whole idea is to learn things and help each other out and stuff like that. And that's that matters a lot. Okay, let me see if I can get the chat here. Okay, you are now a moderator, Jamie. There you go. You see your name change color, all that good stuff. If you do become a member, you'll actually see your icon change to different colors for different months and whatever as you're the longer you're in the membership. It's like it's not much. It's like I don't two ninety nine to be a member a month. There's other memberships that are more. I actually have a membership where I actually do private tutoring. I think the, the highest level up, I'll actually get online with you and uh, do some painting and some tutoring. Yeah, I think the biggest hurdle a lot of artists have, including me, is what to paint if it's not a, if you have a commission it's okay because you know what to paint you're someone's paying you to paint a picture and then it's that's fine but when you just want to paint for enjoyment then you want you gotta think of what you want to paint and of course one of the remedies for that really is i look online and i look around at different pictures and i mean like certain parts of different pictures and I'll kind of put them together and do a painting. And that that seems to work pretty well. And uh, try that sometimes. You know, find, uh, say you want to do a landscape and you see some, a mountain scene you really like a lot. But another painting you see different trees and shrubs or whatever and flowers or something, add that to it. Um, see there's some fences there or a house or whatever, add that to it.
it's it's hard finding new ideas sometimes. You kind of have to look for them you know, or be inspired by them. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a little bit tough, uh, especially if you've done Bob Ross stuff for a while, because they, like I said, they do get kind of the same thing. They may not always always look the same, but what I mean is you're still doing the same kind of a mountain the same way you're doing the same trees, the same birch trees or whatever you're doing, the same water. I mean, water really, reflections in the water, is, I found, was really pretty easy to do. It's just a matter of doing it the proper way. And I do do some tutorials for, from Bob Ross paintings, I'm sure. I'm not sure how many of my painting tutorials you've watched yet, but I'm sure you've seen some that were uh, the Bob Ross wet on wet style painting. Avocado halves dancing together. Well, that's definitely different. I don't normally do very many small paintings, but I have done a very few. I usually do at least an eight by 10, but I prefer doing, you know, 11 by 14 or 16 by 20. I used to, at one time, I used to do just 24, uh, 18 by 24. That's the best way to do it, you know, do your, use your imagination. And you can still use some of those skills, even painting real life things to a, to a degree. You really can. Magnifying glass. <laughs> that would be a pretty small picture. Reminds me of like uh, the Japanese used to do that real tiny little pictures on pottery and stuff like that. And they did very well too, actually. I've seen some really amazing artwork done. Yeah, micro painting. I've been thinking about getting a set of those real tiny little brushes. For mostly for portraits, because when you're doing portraits, there's a lot of times you need some really, really fine lines, really tiny lines. The eyes, the eyes are the biggest trick with portrait painting, is doing the eyes. Once you get past the eyes, the rest of it's not so bad. The nose is a bit difficult. The mouth's not too awful bad, but you know. Uh, getting them eyes right and mostly because if you're looking at somebody's picture or you're looking at them you see them through their through their eyes you see their eyes and you know that's part of the recognition of a person is their eyes Yeah, I was looking at some the other day. I have some pretty small ones, but not not as small as I like. Now, I could cut some of mine down to just a couple of bristles, and I have before. There are ways to do it. Windows to the soul, exactly. Yeah, just taking, uh, you can just take an old brush and clip off a bunch of the bristles and make it as small as you want. I've actually taped some really long hairs, just a couple of them, two hairs from a brush on the, to the back of a, of a brush because I had to have them really tiny little lines. And that's what I used and it, it did work. Do you have any internet problems, Recon? Welcome to the Internet Problem Club.
I like to do animals sometimes too. I haven't done any in quite a while, but well, the last one I did was um, my own dog and a friend of mine's dog. Although he actually bought that one, he paid for that one. Yeah, I bet it is bad internet. Now the Star X will work for you. Look it up. That Starlink, Star X. It's a bit expensive, but just to get it set up. But you can go around in a in a boat and it'll work. And it's and it's as fast as uh, it's almost as good as cable. It probably is, maybe even better. Well, probably the best thing I think is take a picture. That's what I do. I just print the picture out and then I go from that. Because the dog ain't going to stay still no matter what you do. Yeah, Starlink, it's a bit pricey, definitely. But it's like $110 a month once you hook up. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> And that's that's where cable is. I mean, if you got cable, it's one hundred and ten dollars or more a month. I don't know what recon pays. You got cable recon or what? <laughs> yeah, you can post some of your pictures on your. Uh, on YouTube. In fact, we may do that sometime here in the future when we do uh, an online lesson and then uh, whoever does the, a class online and we'll just have them post their pictures. Sure, you have a channel. Your name is your channel. Yeah, cable Wi-Fi is 140 a month. Yeah, so so the Starlink is cheaper. It's like 110, 120 a month, something like that. Yeah, just go to your profile and you can find it there. Where you can post your pictures and stuff. For sure. I'll probably try to post up another tip or two this week. I did one this week of the wisp brush. Don't know if you all saw it or not, but that's quite a good, that's a nice little brush. I don't know if you can see it or not. See how the hairs are different on it? Put it back on the back of something dark, and you can see it better. See how that is right there, that brush? It's called a wisp brush. Works great for making tree leaves. You can use it for grass, lots of things you can use it for. I'm still experimenting with it. But it does do pretty well on trees. You don't have to use all of them at one time. You can just use, you know, the first two or three or four or whatever, just half at a time or whatever. Works pretty good. And you can get different sizes. The one I got was a little bit smaller than I really wanted, but it's not too bad. It's like a fan brush with gaps in it. I don't think you can really cut the fan brush I guess you could try to cut a fan brush with them gaps in it. That's possible, I guess. But it's like a fan brush, but they call it a wisp. It's actually, it's actually a flat one, too. And here's another one. You can see that one. I don't know if you can see that clearly or not, but... That's a square one.
And of course, I have other ones, you know, for hair and stuff like that, for dogs or people or whatever that work pretty well. But you can get different ones that have them gaps. Yeah, you can use them a lot better. I mean, it's the better your brushes, the better you're going to be able to paint. That's the biggest thing. I've always told everybody, you know, don't buy cheap brushes because the hairs fall out of them and, then, and you won't be happy with them. The painting won't come out very well. You need to have good quality brushes. Yeah, I've seen that, Recon. There really are some incredible artistic people in the world. There really are. There's, there's just... Uh, there's no end to them, the people that can paint. Yeah, there's a number of brushes that I still want to get. I haven't got yet, but mostly because when I go to buy brushes, I just forget. What I, I know what I wanted to get originally, the, the ones I normally use a lot, but I literally have, I have a ton of brushes now because when I was teaching classes and stuff, I bought extra brushes for other people to use. And I bet I have three or 400 brushes, at least, probably more, probably more. And they're all good quality brushes. They're not cheap ones. Well, guys, we've been at this now for three, two hours. I think it's probably the longest. It may have been the longest uh, live I've had. So I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to shut it down. And um, I'm going to try one more time for Jamie to see this picture. If she can. This is what you can do if you really want to, Jamie. This is acrylic. That's this is my great granddaughter. So don't be discouraged, and uh, this is what you can do. This takes practice and patience, and the desire to do it. That's all it really takes. Thank you. So just be patient with yourself. Take it step by step. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. I think that's the biggest problem most artists have. And I did the same thing. Um, yeah, good night, Recon. Be safe and uh, stay healthy, buddy. Um, is you're afraid, when you get to a certain point in the painting, and I'm sure you've seen this yourself, that it looks like really amazing. It looks really good but you know you're not done and you're afraid to do that particular thing you want to do or it needs to be done because you're afraid you're, you're afraid you're going to mess up the rest of the painting. You have to bite the bullet and just do it. So you got to get rid of the fear of it and just bullet ahead. And once, you, once you've been painting and you've already been painting for a while, obviously, you know you can fix it. It may not be pleasant, but you can fix it whether it's acrylic or oil. All right, well, have a good night, guys. Jamie, it was great meeting you, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in, in the next live. Uh, it probably won't be a painting lesson in the next live, but we're going to be doing an, another live here sometime soon, and... Uh, be sure if you have no any other artists, share it with your friends and have them come on and uh, join up. We appreciate it. Yeah, great. Well, I want to motivate people, and that's what we're here for. So you all have a great night, and stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll catch you all at the next live. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.